If you're not pouring good things into your mind, if you're not feeding your mind with powerful inspirational things, and if you're not living in congruency with the way that you know that you need to be living as according to your own values, then you will get trampled in objection handling. You will buy into people's stories because you know in your heart of hearts that you're not doing what you need to be doing. And so you won't have that extra oomph, that extra chutzpah to be able to get somebody across the line. Pirates have long fascinated the minds of men. Rebellious, adventurous, and free-spirited, they carved their own path in the world. After serving 10 years in the Navy, I took the plunge to write my own story. Since then, I've learned directly from some of the most savvy marketers in the game. My name is Ben Perry, and welcome to the Pirate Marketing Podcast. We are putting the finishing touches on our new uh, membership. We're going to be talking about all things sales. It's going to be uh, weekly calls on objection handling, probe and clarify in the beginning of your calls, mindset, and just all things sales related in order to be able to help you close more sales, make more deals, be able to objection handle better. The membership is called the Sales Man Ship because this is the Pirate Marketing Podcast, and I am your host, Pirate Marketing Captain Ben Perry. I am recruiting people to join my crew on the salesmanship. So if you're interested, let me know. You can go to thesalesmanship.co. This is gonna be a little bit of a different episode. We haven't figured out quite what the name is going to be for this uh, different type of segment, but Hey guys, so I'm coming to you as I'm editing this uh, episode and we've figured out a name for this particular style of episode. It's gonna be called The Pirate's Life. So anytime you see in the title it says Pirate's Life, that means this is gonna be more around lifestyle, more around uh, more of the things that are not just sales and marketing and all of that jazz because the, the goal for this podcast is for it not just to be strictly about business, but for it to be a little bit of a variety show, right? You never really know what you're going to get. Um, and that's the whole basis of what I love to do. All right. I love to mix it up. So on with the episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about sales and the mindset around sales, but then also we wanted to cover a little bit of like lifestyle because What's the purpose of doing sales if not to allow you to do the thing that you actually want? I've got my first mate here with me. Uh, she's back again. Why don't you introduce <laughs> yourself for those who uh, maybe aren't watching us on YouTube right now and maybe only listening on. Yeah. Yeah. Lauren Jane here again. Lauren Jane Perry. Uh, and yeah, we're about to go on an adventure but I guess really, I kind of wanted to talk about um, part of what in, like instigated us to to do this adventure. I don't know if that's the right word, but inspired maybe there you is go. better. Um, yeah. And how it's related to sales and how it would make sense to talk about it to the people who are maybe doing sales right now. Well, so I guess let's just get into it, right? So the mindset of a salesperson whether you do sales for another company and that's all you do is do you know sales calls or whether you're somebody who has your own business and sales is a part of it i think that um part of being a sales rep or being somebody who's doing sales you just need to know that there's going to be plenty of people who say no whether you have a perfect sales call whether you follow a process completely to a T, there's going to be people that just, for whatever reason, they are not going to move forward and it has nothing to do with you. And I don't think that there's that much of a reminder for new sales reps or new people doing sales to just acknowledge that this is just a natural part of being in sales. Um well, and can I say, isn't usually, isn't the typical standard for this type of sales an 80-20? Like typically 20% close rate is is good to some degree, depending on like the price, the op offer. Would it, you agree? It, it depends on the offer, right? Because you can have offers where, I mean, people are buying hand over fist, but then you have offers that where they can see the value, the price point might be out of their range, uh, of what they're normally used to spending. 
And in which case you're going to have to really make the case as to why this thing uh, justifies them spending it at the price point that you're selling it for. Um, because I've just seen offers where people buy left and right because they rode the wave of the market. Right. But I tell you right now, if you tried to create a high ticket offer on how to sell newspapers to people, you're probably going to have a very, very hard time. Um, whereas right now, everybody, the, the, the hysteria right now is AI, right? Before <laughs> AI, it was crypto. Before it was crypto, it was, you know, Amazon FBA. Um, so it just depends on like what the current thing is, but it probably wouldn't be too hard to sell anything that has to do with AI right now, because that's just where the market is. So to answer your question, it just depends. But all of that aside, it's you just have to know that you could follow your process to a T and it has nothing to do with you, right? Some will, some won't. So what? Somebody's waiting for you to be able to help them make a swift, powerful decision to be able to help themselves. Yeah, I guess the reason I bring up the 80-20 thing is because I guess sometimes it gives me a sense of like, if someone said no, it's like, well, well, of course, if possibly 80% of people might say no, then, okay, that's just one more no that gets me closer to the yes. And it kind of gives me a little bit of breathing room to give myself a break that it's like not everybody's going to close on the first call. And some of those might come back or might be a follow up. Um, and I'm not trying to give myself too much leniency, but also some grace because I am new. Um you know, had it since our talk, we've, I've had a couple of weeks where I closed five or four, and then I've had a week again where I closed three. And it's like the roller coaster of sales is difficult and how to get through that and the mindset that you have to have in order to do this kind of a job. I, I think it takes extreme discipline because it's high emotions, high emotions on the call, the closer for, you know, the prospect and managing that energy and those emotions. And, um, just being able to like stay with it, I think, I think is something that you've been watching me ride this wave and guiding me and man, nothing is like actually going through it. Yeah. So, yeah. Also like people don't ever really tell you no. Like it's not like somebody says, That's no, so true. I, 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 I am not doing this. They'll say, I need to think about it. They'll, I haven't they'll heard say, it yet. Yeah, they'll say, no, 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 this sounds really good because it's a cultural thing. Like they, it's like they, unless you absolutely offended them, in which case they're not even going to make it to the end of your pitch. I've only had two that they didn't even make it through the end of the call. Like they just got so offended because I was asking them questions. Like, how dare you ask me questions? Yeah, but most people, they're not going to be telling you no. That it's all different types mm -hmm. of other than no, right? And, and, you know, a cliche is anything other than a yes is a, no. no. Um, so yeah. yeah, the think about it, realizing that that is basically a no, but they just kind of disguised it. It is. And, and, and so this also is where, you know, you hire people who can help you through objection handling, who can help you to be able to um, know what to do during the discovery phase before you make the offer. Because a lot of objections can be prevented by figuring out and understanding where they're coming from. Um, because if you get to the end of a call and they're like, oh, I need to think about it. It's like, um, or if they say, you know what? Like, I don't have my wallet. Like, I really want to do this. I don't have my wallet. <laughs> it's like, you know, you need to know whether that person is lying or not. Mm -hmm. What do you do whenever you're faced with that type of situation? And it's really interesting. I'm going to give a, a, a personal anecdote. I um, So we are about to go nomadic, all right? And we're about to put all of our stuff into storage. And we are going to go, um, first, we're going to stop at, you know, your best friend's place in California and be there yeah, for- You gave for it away bit. so early. <laughs> well, so to understand uh, about my story that I'm about to tell. Uh, so I was looking for storage units. And so mm -hmm. I went to three or four um, different storage units. Um, but before I did that, I basically signed up with the first storage unit. And then I came home and I told you mm -hmm. that I signed up for the storage unit. And she was like, what well, I said, I don't want to be the, the spouse objection. Like, I don't want to do this because I know that then I'll get spouse objections. 
Yeah. But so like here was I, the situation, right? I thought it was what too expensive? No, 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 no. The situation I was I said yes. I said yes, this is absolutely what I want. It's great. It's just down the road. I didn't have my card, the card that I wanted to use. And so I said, hey, I'm literally five minutes down the road. I'm going to go get my card and I'm going to come right back. And I came home and you were like, you did what? Well, there was one that was even closer and cheaper than I thought. Yeah. And so I got all the information. And so like, then he's like, hey, he called me and, uh, and, and it was like past the time of like for me to come back. And I didn't get back to him because I knew you said, hey, we need to go and look at those other storage mm-hmm. units. And so we did. We went and looked at the other storages. But guess what? I didn't call that guy back immediately, which this is something really interesting to know is I had every intention of buying on the first encounter. And I legitimately was like, hey, I'm going to go get my card. And then I was intercepted by... Hey. Yes, by Lauren, so right? <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, let me figure this out, right? Like, you do make a good point. If this other place I is, it was it has better rates, right? Then I, I would be stupid to sign up with something. And because for me, I'm just like, hey, let me buy. I don't like to look around a lot. It's like, if I find something that feels like it's a fit for me, I'm going to go and do it. And I had already done all the research, which is the other objection. You and like, uh, well, I you had already done I'm the like, research. I did the research. And I didn't. And so I was like, okay, so you did do research. Okay. But after we did go through and we figured out, yeah, that guy did have the best rates. And so we went back. But the thing is, it's like, I could have been swayed. I could have been swayed over here and (laughs) like you got to know on your calls, somebody could genuinely feel like they're going to sign up Mm -hmm. unless you get some type of commitment from them, then a perfectly honest, or at least what they think to themselves, person who thinks that they're going to go and buy from you. There's 50 million things that can happen, even if you're going to talk to them between today and tomorrow. I've had plenty of either wives or husbands be the thing that like the person was totally all in. And then for one reason or another, they said, sorry, I can't. And I, you know, it was a spouse objection. So I have to assume it really was the spouse said no, or they were afraid and didn't want to tell me. Yeah, I guess. And so like, what do you do? How do you handle that? But, but I guess today what we want to talk about is just the natural ups and downs of being in sales. And what do you do in order to, Fortify your mind so that, you know, you don't let the ups and downs get to you. And part of this is you having a steady baseline. Mm -hmm. You need to have a routine and you need to know that you're already winning the day before you even start taking your calls. So somebody was asking me whether that he should work out, you know, should I work out in the morning? Should I work out in the evening? It's like, hey, man, I can't speak for you. I can only speak for myself. And for me, I know that. I don't, I'm exhausted at the end of the day. I don't really want to go and work out at the end of the day. But if I work out in the beginning of the day, then I've already won the day and I can use that momentum to bring on to the rest of my calls. Well, and I think for me, the fact that like, I normally am all about that exercise routine, doing yoga, doing, going to the gym, um, you know, used to go running a lot, especially in Florida where it's nice and flat as versus Austin, it's very hilly, but um I'm all about that and balance and meditation and breath work. And even I slipped and let all that go to pick up, you know, this new thing to learn the sales. Um, And so just like having you and, you know, other people remind me, Hey, like, even though you know better, you're not doing it. Yeah. Like, are you doing the thing that you know you should do? Yeah. You got to be careful not to pendulum swing. Yeah. Um, And (laughs) that is really easy to do. So have your own baseline. Um, I recommend doing meditation and breath work. Um, every time I do, I feel better for it. Um, and there are days when I go without doing it. And then I go and I sit down and I do some breath work and meditation. I'm like, man, why did I stop this? Cause this feels so good. So that is one way to be able to, to help yourself. I guess another way is to track your numbers. Mm -hmm. Like you need to know that like, you know, let's say out of 20 people, right. And you have a 20% closing rate. So out of 20 people, you're going to close four. 
Okay, well, you might talk to the 16 people that are going to say no before you hit the four. And if you just know that that's the way that the percentages and the math adds up, then you can like give yourself a little bit of grace. Yeah, because I mean, 16 no's in a row can be very like wearing on you. Yeah. But how do you weather that storm and stop thinking like, oh, maybe I need to do something different? I would tell you, don't do anything different. If you are losing, i.e. you're not closing sales, this is not the time to try anything different. Uh, Here's why. Because if provided that you have a process that you know that works or a process that you learn from somebody, because if you follow the process and you do everything in your power to be able to help that person overcome their fears, overcome their uncertainties, and to be able to lead them to doing and uh, and making a swift, powerful decision, and they still choose not to buy, that's okay because now you can go to bed with your soul at peace because you know you followed your process. Here's what happens when you don't. When you don't follow the process, when you start to add a few things in or experiment, and you don't go all the way or you don't challenge them and they don't Mm -hmm. end up buying, at the end of the call, you're not only gonna feel bad because they didn't sign up, but you're also gonna feel bad because you know in your heart of hearts that you didn't follow your process and you let them down. Not just them, but you let yourself down. That is the quickest way to find yourself into a spiraling downward spiral. Don't, don't do it, okay? If you want to maintain your equanimity, yeah. And I, I remember last week, there were a few that they end up saying no for whatever reason. But I remember that I did the process and I objection handled to the best of my ability. And I didn't just let them go with a like, okay, have a great day. Like I was like, I was very concerned because some of them told me their scenario. And if they didn't get a job within 30 days, like some really bad things were going to happen. And knowing that person's walking away from something that could help them, um, I followed my process. And so then I felt very proud of myself that, okay, I did my best. I can't make them do it, but I can do my darndest to actually follow the process. So I totally felt that on those calls. Now the ones I didn't fully follow the process, I I wasn't happy with myself. But that brings me to like that that roller coaster and finding a way back to to balance from that with my emotions. And, you know, because I gotta. I got to be very careful with my emotions so that it doesn't affect the next call. Yeah. So on that note, I guess, um, what are, besides the meditation and the breath work, um, I know one thing we talked about is like having something to look forward to. Yeah. Before we start talking about um, what we have to look forward to, I think it's also important that you be like consuming something that is inspirational for you. Um, because if you are reading books or if you're listening to an audio book, or if you're watching a YouTube channel that inspires you, or you're listening to one of those motivational YouTube channels, um, then you will have something to give because if you aren't feeding yourself, feeding your mind, feeding your soul, if you have faith, if you're not, you know, following your faith, if you aren't, filling your soul with something, then how can you pour into others? Mm -hmm. And so part of what is going to help you be more persuasive and to have more conviction is if you have yourself uh, a diet of personal development. Um, I know when we were at Traffic and Funnels, we, when I was at Traffic and Funnels. (laughs) It um, felt like I was with you. Yeah, that's true. Well, so in it, (laughs) you might, you might get this. I played the Jim Rohn Ultimate Library every morning in the shower. Oh, yeah. So I heard it. <laughs> yeah. So, but Jim Rohn is amazing. And Jim Rohn has all kinds of very powerful, relevant things to do when it comes to not just sales, but in life in general. And when you know that you're doing everything you can to be a good person um, and be a person in alignment and congruency, then that allows you to be able to push that much harder or to go one more rep on the sales call during objection handling. Because if you're not, if you're not pouring good things into your mind, if you're not feeding your mind with powerful inspirational things, and if you're not 
living in congruency with the way that you know that you need to be living as according to your own values, then you will get trampled in objection handling. You will buy into people's stories because you know in your heart of hearts that you're not doing what you need to be doing. And so you won't have that extra oomph, that extra chutzpah to be able to get somebody across the line. So it's actually really important for you to clearly define out your values and your goals and figure out, are you living to the standards that you've decided to live your life? And if you're not, this would be a good invitation for you to re- reconsider and revisit it. Well, I think one line that you always say to me, I think it was Jim Rohn that said it. If it's you, if it's easy to do, can you say it the way you say it? <laughs> you mean the way that he says it? <laughs> yeah. Say it in your voice and his voice. Jim, yeah. Jim Rohn says, if it's easy to do, it's easy not to do. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess for me, I'm like, I figured I wouldn't have any problems with balance and like making sure I was meditating and doing yoga and all these things. Um, because it's like, oh, it's easy to do. I'm all about balance. I'm all about these things. And yet even I can slip because it's like, you have to just keep doing it. It's so easy to stop. Um, so, and even the personal development, reading the books, like I was, I was getting really good at reading every morning and then I just let it slip. So, um, I think just having that discipline to continue to show up the way that you know you need to, even when you get to these higher levels, it it continues. You still need to do it. You still need to work out. Like it, just because you're fit doesn't mean you you quit going to the gym, kind of a thing. Not that I'm fit right now, but I was I have been fit, <laughs> and I'll get there again. Yeah. So I mean, if you don't keep doing it, you will lose the muscle, and whether that's your mental muscle, your emotional muscle, like whatever it is, you'll lose that if you don't keep at it something I've found at least. Yeah. Um, so going back to the whole, like, if you're in sales, what, what helps you to be able to keep on going whenever you have weeks that are down and that is having something to look forward to. Um, some people, they don't necessarily have a lot to look forward to. They're just stacking cash and they don't really have any reason why. And I would be, probably doubly concerned for that person because it's going to be really easy for that person to just have one off day and then they go postal and um, they might just, you know, blow up their life because they don't really like, they don't have anything that they're looking forward to. Um, So we're, we've decided, right. That we're going to go nomadic, (laughs) nomadic, right. It's something that we've been wanting to do. Um, to travel, to be able to explore um, the world, if you will. And um, and so that is both been something that's been very exciting for us. But then also we just now we get to logistically have new problems to be able to solve yeah. while also doing the thing that we actually want to do, which even though there's going to be challenges and that we're already thinking through some of these challenges because it is something that we want to do Mm -hmm. it comes with its own batteries included yeah and i think just to note you were mentioning like people who are just stacking cash so who we were five ten years ago um to who we are today if we could go back and talk to our past selves like they'd probably be like you've made it you're great like why are you trying for anything more you know what i mean but it's like when you get to that next level you have to make bigger goals right so If we tried to do back then what we're about to do now, it would have looked entirely different. And in that whole thing of like new level, new devil, new problems. And it's like, but it's good. It's good to have these new problems um, and new higher goals each time we, we get to the next rung. So even though it's, it's not overwhelming, it's a lot, the, the logistical problems, I'm game. I'm excited about it. So like my main logistical problem is if I'm going to be doing sales calls, especially like possibly five or six back to back, um, I need to be somewhere quiet with good internet. Um, and people keep trying to say, oh yeah, you can just like use the co-working space, like, you know, out there in the, like the bullpen. Um, and I'm like, no, no, I don't think you understand what kind of calls I'm doing. Um, so that's not going to work or sure. You can just use the extra room where there happens to be maybe kids nearby. And it's like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. Um, or go to a coffee shop. Mm-mm, nope. You used to love working for coffee shops, but now it's like, that's just, that's not realistic. 
So I am looking at like private offices or Airbnbs. Um, I mean, we've been talking about a lot of different ways, like traveling by vehicle, like driving, riding in a train, riding in a plane, like all, you know, sailing a boat. No, we can't sail to, if we're going to California first, you know, what are the different logistical ways to get there? And what do we want to see along the way so that we have something exciting to go and do on this, this journey? Cause it's not just about getting there. It's that journey to the destination. That's what I mean. And so this is giving me something to be passionate about, driven towards something that when I'm making the money, I know it's going towards this goal. So even if I have a rough day, I have a goal to get to and, and all the logistics with that. So I know what this money is going to, to be excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. We also have the interesting um, debacle of having cats and traveling with cats. So it is um, probably been one of the most frustrating things because there's not a lot of support to travel with cats. If you have dogs, fuck, you can do whatever the fuck you want. But cats, man, that's a different story entirely. And so we are, um, yeah, we're figuring it out. We might just, um, well, we might just put them with somebody. A so cat that, nanny. Yeah. <laughs> A cat, cat nanny. Yeah. I don't know. I love our cats. They're like our little children, but um, it is interesting because even I was contacting the train. I didn't know you can um, travel on the trains and, and put your car. If you're going somewhere on the East coast, like going to New York to Florida, yep. um, put your car up on like into a, what, like a cargo right. uh, bin and then ride on the train, which sounds awesome. And I was like, Oh great. We can take all our stuff. We'll have the car. Not that you can drive around New York anyways, but yeah. um but I was thinking the same thing for the cats. I was like, could they go in there? And I was trying to figure out all the logistics and you can bring them in if you're in coach, but you can only bring them on a seven hour trip, not like an 11 hour trip. And so we did the math with like one of their, their people. And they said, Oh, it'd be, what was it? 14 days. Cause I'd have to go seven hours at a time and change trains and stuff. And I was like, yeah, um, 14 days is not going to work for me. <laughs> um, not when it could be what a couple hour flight or yeah. a couple day trip by car. Yeah. Well, so beyond figuring those logistics out, I already see kind of like my, my reasoning, my why mm -hmm. um, for wanting to travel is well, first of all, because I, I want to be able to see the world. I want to be able to lay my own eyes on some of the most beautiful places uh, in the world. And, you know, right now, while we're in the States, there's a lot of amazing things, amazing places in the United States. The United States is so huge. Mm -hmm. um, like we plan on going to Europe. We plan on going international and going to different places. Um, but there's so much to see in the United States. And then I read a statistic the, the other day that said, this breaks my heart, that only 15% of Americans ever apply for a passport. 15%. That is an astounding, horrifying number to me because it reminds me of um, a quote. I forget who, who was the uh, author of this quote, um, but it says, the world is like a book. And those who never travel only read but one page. And so, mm. like, I I love to read. And so I want to be able to read the whole world. Um, but oh, I love that. Yeah. And so I also want to be able to do these types of podcasts, these types of videos in beautiful, lush, um, like just breathtaking locations. Because I see it as hey, when I'm 100 years old and I'm looking back on my life, I'm going to have like my my journal will be all these video journals of me in these different places. I'll be like telling my my kids, my grandkids, my great grandkids and my great, great, great grandkids like, look, this is where everywhere that I was. This is, you know, where your grandpa was. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's part of me living the legacy. And that's part of me actually living life, because if I don't, then what am I going to, what am I doing with my life? Right? Like I've heard Hermosi say this, but I actually like already kind of thought this way, which mm -hmm. makes me think that, Hey, all successful people end up kind of just thinking alike. 
And yes, I'm calling my shot that I'm going to be, you know, just as successful as Hermosi. But he said, like, I like to think of myself as like 80 years old. And if I was 80 years old, would I, and I think back to this moment now, I'm 38, would I trade places with myself? And I'd be like, fuck yeah, I would trade places with myself. Because like to be able to go back and relive all of this life, to be 38 again, like, holy crap, like this is amazing. Yeah. This is awesome. Like, oh, the pain in my knees is gone. Oh, my back pain is gone. Oh, wow. <laughs> like this is, I have so much vitality and, and, and so much youth a part of me. I mean, my beard isn't all gray, you know, like I, I do that to myself to yeah. kind of fake myself out, to kind of give myself my own, like kind of negative inspiration. Yeah. Well, and I guess I think about like my YouTube channel is called Lauren J inspires. How am I going to be inspirational if I'm not living the most inspiring life? Like what's, what is inspiring? I guess in my eyes, it is going to amazing places. Like, is it okay if I say one of the places we're going to go to? Sure. The Grand Canyon. Like <laughs> I've been there when I was younger, but I was like, what if we go to the Grand Canyon and we film something from there? Like, heck, what if we did like yoga very far away from the edge, but um, if we did yoga at the Grand Canyon. And like, what if we, um, you know, film, I don't know. What if you took a sales uh, coaching call from the Grand Canyon, <laughs> you know, like just yeah. what, what can we do that would be interesting and fun and amazing and uh, interesting for other people to watch and get inspired by? Like if my whole purpose is to inspire people to live their best lives and, and do more, live more, feel happier. Like, what is that? Like, to me, it's the experiences that you have. It's helping other people out. It's um, feeling the happiness connection. Like, I, I can't wait to go see my best friend and connect again with her and see her, her small children. Like, this gives me some oomph, gives me some, some passion as versus like, I don't know what I get to buy some more clothes or something. Like, I mean, if we stay here, we can get a bigger house. Great. You know, I've imagined it a million times. And, and I what? love Austin. Austin's yeah, yeah. amazing. But I feel like I've already lived that life because I've imagined it so many times. I'm like, okay, it was nice. It was a big house. Cool. Like, what's next? So instead of us even bothering to move into that big house, let's go travel first. Because what what's now exciting me is that idea. And it also really helps to have a partner that has the same values as you. Oh my gosh. Can we talk about that real quick, actually? Because someone <laughs> sure. messaged me. So they were, because I'd have this whole goal setting course and it's um, it's setting your, like talking about your ideal day and then how to make, make a dream board, basically like a digital dream board based on your goals and your dreams. And so I do this whole like meditation and like this thought process of like trying to figure out what do you truly want so that you can record it and be able to look at it visually and and take it to like the next level like what are the actions you take to actually get the things you want well the person messaged me and said but what if your partner's not like on board with some of the same goals like that's big like what if i wanted something that you don't want and we're not talking about like an item you get from the mall but like something for your life like what if you wanted to go travel and i wanted the house like how i mean i think you and i have figured out how to communicate <laughs> and yeah. work through that but yeah what are your thoughts on that i guess well i want to go to burning man and uh, dude at one point i was concerned about that early on in our relationship i was like oh, he's gonna go to burning man he's gonna do drugs he's gonna end up with some hippie girl and i'm gonna be out on my own i'm gonna be all <laughs> alone like you know i, have I this did not know you thought story that. in my head you never told me that well that's you know early on wow. i didn't know what was going to happen with us oh, so yeah. i was worried yeah. I was like, Burning Man. I think I'm a hippie, fun girl, but those girls are really crazy. You know, <laughs> they're going to be <laughs> painted and wearing nothing. But yeah. And yeah. And now I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I'll be painted wearing nothing. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not really. But maybe. No. Uh, next time on Burning Man with Ben and Lauren. Oh uh, <laughs> no. So think of the content. <laughs> <laughs> the the thumbnail alone so anywho wow, wow but babe like wow. think about the difference between like our relationship in the beginning and like me being fearful of what was going to happen and i thought what do you think shifted for you because well, so i don't think much. that i've made that much change you don't think you've changed i think you've changed a lot well i've i've have <laughs> i have chosen to be in a committed monogamous relationship yeah but you've also like grown and changed as a person as yeah a um 
what do I think has changed to make me be able to trust you you more? You mean, yeah, because you used to, you used to fly off the handle when we talked about Burning Man. Yeah. Let's see what has changed. I don't know. I think some of it comes with age. Some of it comes with experience and trust. And even though you have a lot of variety to you, like you have your crazy Captain Jack side, you have this serious stoic, I'm going to read philosophy side. Um, but you have a center and a grounding. And so I think we have found a center and a grounding. And so I think that actually applies to the where I started from of like, how, what do you do with, if you have different goals, uh, different things you want to do, you have to have that center to come back to and the communication and the trust and the me having to, I had to know you're not trying to go to Burning Man because you want to like get high and get with other girls. I mean, you want to go have an experience like, um, that it's, I mean, to my knowledge, it's a, a space of creativity and like connection and I don't know, just really letting the structure of society go and just kind of getting all out there. I, I mean, you could tell me why you actually want to go, but at the end of the day, it's about trust and growing with your partner, like growing with your partner. That's, that's the huge thing of if you're going to have big goals, you've got to have those big goals together. And you thought I wasn't going to want to travel you thought because i have i've wanted the house for so long i have it in my dream board and you didn't really want a big house either i i looked up on zillow i had the picture of it it's in my dream board I, well i wanted a big house but not as big as you wanted <laughs> should we tell them about that fight <laughs> no, go i ahead. don't mind no go ahead what was it, it was a couple years ago now we had a fight like a pro- possibly ending our relationship fight <laughs> over the most ridiculous thing ever you wanted a mansion that was the kind of mansions you see on what is that called? Like homes of the rich and famous. Actually, I can't do the voice. Oh, can do the, the, voice. the cribs. No, MCD not cribs. cribs. No, yeah. no, no. It was the guy with the British accent. I, I don't know if I can. Uh, oh, nice homes. Very nice homes. Welcome. I can't do the voice right now. Can you do it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. The old British guy that's like, he's taught, he, they show these gorgeous homes and he's showing this mansion that's like a small city practically. And then you were watching it and saying that's what you wanted. And mm-hmm. I did not. I wanted, you know, a nice home, but like, you know, a normal nice home, like four bedroom, maybe five bedroom, but not like, I don't know, 20 bedrooms, <laughs> you know, like. I don't need 20 bedrooms. You wanted a small city. I Nin- was like, I'm going to be, be taking a train in the house to get to the other side of the house. Yeah. And I could wear the conductor hat. <laughs> so we had this fight because you had these big goals. Yep. And you felt like my goals were too small. It's not in the goals. It was that I'm like, that's the kind of house that I want. And you were like, I don't need a big house like that. I don't want a big house like that. And mm-hmm. I was like, well, you better get on board because that's what I'm that's what I'm gonna have. <laughs> and so yeah, like either you're gonna be here for it or I don't I don't I don't know. Cause it, it was just because you were you were pushing against that. And I'm like, why? Like, because for me, and you gotta know this about me, like my my whole purpose, I feel, is to be able, well, number one, like value is to be able to grow and to expand mm-hmm. and evolve. And that is that, like, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not in five years, maybe not even in, well, maybe in 10 years. But like, I plan to keep growing, expanding, and also upgrading my environment mm-hmm. and not just have one mansion, but maybe have fucking five. Sure. Why not? Because that is part of growing and expanding. And it's like, then you get people go, well, do you need that? Is that really like, you know, going to be good for society? It's like, that's not what this is about. This is about like you having goals to be able to pursue so that you can continue to grow because the game keeps evolving. You can't win this game. The whole, this is, this is game theory, right? The goal of the game is to keep the game going. And the way that I want to play this game, it's going to end up in having at least one of those homes, one of those houses, if not multiple of those houses, because that's just where I'm headed. Well, I think one big thing you said there was, do you need that? So that's a common like mindset and thing that you hear people say when someone gets to a certain level, their friends or family, their, you know, even strangers will say like, well, you don't need that. Or why do you feel like you need that? And And I think you do need bigger goals and maybe that's not a mansion. Maybe it's, you want to start some sort of business or you want to travel more. You like whatever your big goals are, 
Um, and I think that was something like I read in Grant Cardone's book the other day. It was just like, everybody was telling him like, you don't need that. And it's like, well, well, first of all, who are you to say what I do and don't need? But second of all, like I do need a bigger goal. Cause if I, if my only goal was what I have already, I would not grow anymore because I would have what I need. I would ha- have what I have. So how would society even work the way that it works right now? Because if any of the large companies, any of the large you know, structures of society stopped at what do you need? Like we wouldn't be what we are, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I can't think of examples off the top of my head, but like, I mean, do you need, I don't know, what's a good example of a, a good, big, giant thing? I mean, like a yacht. <laughs> well, I was thinking about more like, um, well, I mean, um, how about, a everything I can think of Rolls Royce throw, <laughs> throw rocks at. um like do I need a grand piano <laughs> yeah well a yes, grand I, piano it fits into it the creates vision beautiful music yeah but you don't have to have that but well, honestly all we need is what a tent and some food yeah or a cave that's what you need yeah but that's the bottom level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and we're talking about going to the top yeah. So at the top is things like what we're doing with the travel, with the what what's your bigger goal in life about um, self-actualization, yeah. becoming the best version of yourself, reading books, filling your mind. Yep. And that's part of this this whole journey, right? So that's what we're doing. We are mm-hmm. going nomadic in uh, less than a month. And <laughs> um, so... It's going to be interesting because these backgrounds to these videos are about to change very drastically. I'm very excited about it. Um, I, I, a couple of years ago, I made a post that went viral because I taught a bunch of other people how to get massive engagement. Um, every time that I've recommended somebody use this, it has gone viral. Uh oh, you're going to start it again. I'm going to start it again. <laughs> and Back in 2017, 2018, I said, if I were to roll into your town, would you meet up with me for coffee? Why or in? And everybody used it. Everybody got tons of comments, tons of engagement because it facilitated actual connection. And so this is my question for you. If we, we're going to be headed to California, we're headed west from Austin. And so in between Austin and here, I think, is New Mexico and Arizona, Las Vegas, San Diego. If you're in any of those areas and you would like to meet up for a coffee, hit me up. Send me a message to um, go to the URL www.fbben.com. That's FB as in Facebook, fbben.com. That'll take you directly to my personal profile. Shoot me a private message. And let me know, and perhaps we will meet up with you for coffee um, in our champagne supernova, which is what we call our car. (laughs) And we'll probably go through Phoenix as well, which is funny because Phoenix was a big, meaningful thing when we first started dating. It was my sign that let me know that you were the right one. And it was true. Um, And it just keeps coming up. Every time we make a good decision, Phoenix is somehow like on a sign somewhere. I don't know. It just comes up. Um, So I feel like I've seen a million good signs about this trip. I feel like this is the thing that keeps my mindset. Like if this comes back to full circle to the sales thing, like when I have a down day, I just, I have this thing to look forward to. And even today, the thing that we're doing today, I have something to look forward to. And I had this all week to look forward to, which is we're going to go kayaking. Yeah, we're going to go kayaking (laughs) after this. So it's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. I can't row hand on the camera. <laughs> Yo-ho, a pirate's life Oh, there's for another me. dog. There's another dog. <laughs> <laughs> row, 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 row your, your boat gently down, down the stream. <laughs> merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Pirate version. Row, row, row <laughs> your boat <laughs> gently down, down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. merrily. Life is but a dream. Where's the rope? <laughs> I think this is a good place to dock the episode. Um, So we are putting the finishing touches on our new uh, membership. Okay. So this membership 
is where we're going to be talking about all things sales. Um, it's going to be uh, weekly calls on objection handling, um, on how to show up and actually probe and clarify in the beginning of your calls, um, mindset, and just all things sales related um, in order to be able to help you close more sales, make more deals, be able to objection handle better. Um, the, the membership is called the sales man ship because this is the pirate marketing podcast and i am your host pirate marketing captain ben perry and so i am recruiting people to join my crew on the salesmanship so if you're interested um let me know next week i think we're going to have the uh url ready but you can go to the salesmanship.co the salesmanship.co um to sign up find out more about us or like i said you can visit me and send me a message on facebook and let me know that you're interested or if you have any questions any last words um i just think it's very fitting that you help people figure out how to do sales to help the prospect figure out their why but also for the salesperson to have their big why and that um part of our why is this this travel which makes sense that a pirate would travel so uh, I'm happy to ride on this ship with you as my captain. And um, let's, let's go have some fun. <laughs> no, I can't, I can't say any better than that. All right, we'll let you go. Have a good one, mihatis. Savvy.